Hi everybody, welcome to Music Moves for Piano, Book 3, Unit 13A. We're going to start by moving in duple meter. Do, day, do, chant, macro beats on do. Do, 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 micro beats. Do, day, do, day, do, day, do, day. I chant macro beats, you chant micro beats. Do, 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 switch. Do day, do day, do day, do day. Echo me, please. Ba 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 ba. Do day, do to do day, do day. Ba 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 ba. ba. Do ta ta do day, do ta ta do. I'm going to sing a song called Chow. <laughs> chow like the dog, not chow like chow. After I sing this, I'd like for you to name the meter of the song. While I'm singing, if you'd like to do this creative movement, go ahead and pretend that you're a tiny worm crawling on a tree trunk. Think about how that makes you move your body. of that song. That was in duple meter. I'm going to sing See How I'm Jumping. Can you sing the resting tone please? Go ahead and pretend that you're Humpty Dumpty balancing on a moving wall. Each time I stop singing, freeze and sing. you a workout. We're going to learn our song to sing for this unit. It's called Fox Terrier. Bum, bum, bum. Go ahead and dance with me and clap on the rests while I sing this song. triple meter. This is in duple meter. Go ahead and echo these rhythm patterns, please. Do, day, do, echo me, please. Do, day, do, day, ta, ta, do, ta, day, ta. Do, day, do, day, ta, ta, do. Let's think now about the category of each of these rhythm patterns. Do day, do day, ta ta do ta day ta. So that one is a rest pattern because we have that quick rest before ta ta do ta day ta. How about the other one? Do day, do day, ta ta do. That one is another rest pattern because we have a rest in that same spot. Ta, ta, do. Let's think about where those patterns happen in the song. 
We're listening for the first rhythm pattern. Do day, do day, ta ta do ta day ta. Bum 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 ba 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 bum 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 ba bum 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 ba 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 bum ba 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 bum ba ba. So that rhythm pattern only happened one time right at the beginning of the song. How about this other rhythm pattern? Do day, do day, ta ta do. Bum 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 ba 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 bum 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 ba bum 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 ba 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 bum ba 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 bum ba ba. So that one was the second rhythm pattern of the song. It only happened twice. As well, so we had that first rhythm pattern, and then the second one, and then we did slightly different things in the second half of the song. Is this song in major or minor tonality or something else? And start getting used to this question because we're not just going to ask about major or minor anymore. This is going to be a new thing. So the answer is, this is in something else. This is in Mixolydian tonality, and we'll talk about that at some point in the future. So go ahead and sing this song with me. I'm going to sing it twice. You can join me both times, or you can just listen once more and then join me the second time. Bum, 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 here I go. Bum, 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 bum. Let's go ahead and come to the keyboard. Turn my page. Ah, and lose other stuff. All right, take your time. Get yourself seated. You're nice and tall. Check your distance. So I have something that's not in your book over here, and then we're going to do these activities that are in your book. So we've been practicing the last unit. We did some review from way back in unit two, and we finished up reviewing letter names. So I'm going to give you a few. And what I'd like for you to do is think about your damper pedal. Think about putting the pedal down silently. Think about playing a key. When you get to the next one, the key goes down. Pedal goes up and down silently. Up, down. Up, down. So continuing with this syncopated pedal as well as the letter names. So here you go. Here are your keys. So pedal down first. A flat. C sharp. A double sharp, G flat, G sharp, E double flat, oh. C sharp, A flat, D flat. So that's just combining all our letter name things that we've been practicing with the pedal practice. So that was just for today. This is not something you have to continue practicing all week, but just another pop quiz that we keep doing in all of these units. So for today, we're going to ignore 
the right side of page 41. We're looking over here at numbers one and two, both of them on the left side. So number one for keyboard geography and technique, we're playing the tonic subdominant dominant tonic arpeggios when F is do, G is do, and C is do. So continuing to practice these, just doing a few at a time. All right, so let's go in F major. See if you can play with me. I'm going to sing the roots as well. You can, you don't have to. So F major. Here we go. Go ahead and pause if you didn't play that with me just now. And then G major. triads in three positions. So you can interpret this a couple of different ways for white piano key major triads. You can do the three triads that are all white keys. So C major, F major, and G major. That's totally fine. Or you can pick any three where Do is a white key. So you can do D major or A major or B major. So you can interpret that either one of those ways and make sure you sing all three sets of syllables. So we're going to do one together right now and then I'm going to have you pause and do the other two. So we're going to do F major. So I have to sing up the octave and then go down. All right, so three positions singing syllables. I'm going to use my left hand. All right, go ahead and at least sing with me or just listen and then you can do it after I'm done. Play if you did not just play. And then we're gonna play again. I'm gonna use my other hand singing the syllables with fa la do. It's a tough one for me figuring out where to transition. Go ahead and sing that if you did not just do it. And then I'll go back to my left hand for so ti re. So ti re, ti re so, re so ti. Play and sing. And then go ahead and do that on G major and C major, or you can pick any other two uh, major chords where Do, or Do, Fa, and So in this case would be a white key. So go ahead and do two others. And then we're looking at the exploration, creativity, improvisation. We have two things that we're going to do today that are in the book, one set of things that's not in the book. So number one, explore the set, the sound of a set of two black piano keys and the three white piano keys around them. This will give you a very interesting sound. So two black piano keys and the three white piano keys around them. Ooh.
doing some different things here, kind of thinking out loud. So when you explore those keys, there are a variety of things that you can do. You can have those chromatics. You can have the first three notes of the major scale. You can have that, the two black keys together. If you do the two black keys and then the white key, different tonics, you can have different tonalities, we use a wide variety of rhythm patterns. So just explore those keys a little bit. I had my two hands this way, you could have it in one hand, and see what different types of sounds and rhythm patterns you can make from those keys. And then number two, audiate a meter and a rhythm pattern. Improvise a melody using two major triads. Use one major triad on a black piano key and the other on a white piano key. So this could be any black key and any white key. We could do, let's see here. Ooh. So I'm doing F sharp major and A major. I love that sound. If that sounds familiar to you, just not that chord transition. It's used in, we talked about how this is used in romantic music sometimes. It's also used in movie music in various places. Sometimes, which is based on romantic music, so. All right, so let's see, a meter and a rhythm pattern. Do 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 da do do da do do. So try having a variety of ma of major chords. So you could have. That's a very different sound. This, very different sound, different sound. So whatever chords you do, experiment each time you do this improvisation with using two different chords and notice how that relationship is different. So go ahead and do an improvisation with a black key triad and a white key triad. Then we have something in my book. So we're gonna do some experiments with different dynamics. So we have talked, I think in book two, about different dynamic levels and the Italian words for those dynamic levels. We talked about pianissimo, piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, forte, fortissimo, so our spectrum of soft to loud. We'd also talked about crescendo, getting louder, diminuendo or decrescendo, getting softer. I think those were all of the words that we had talked about at that point. So one thing that I'd like to review today is just those words. So pianissimo, very soft, abbreviated PP, piano, soft, abbreviated P, mezzo piano, medium soft or moderately soft, abbreviated MP, mezzo forte, abbreviated MF, or standing for medium loud or moderately loud, forte, standing for loud, abbreviated F, and fortissimo, abbreviated FF, standing for very loud. Then we have crescendo. Often in your music, this will be marked with a sign that looks like this going from left to right. We read music from left to right. Uh, it could also look like C-R-E-S period. And then diminuendo would be a sign that looks like this, or it'll say D-I-M, like dim the lights. It comes from the same root, I'm sure. So diminuendo or decrescendo. So we're gonna use that vocabulary today when we do this improvisation. 
So I'd like for you to play several different rhythm patterns using different dynamics. So I'm going to give you a dynamic and then I'd like for you to play some rhythm patterns at that dynamic. Any keys, that's up to you. So would you please play some rhythm patterns at a mezzo forte dynamic? Would you play some at a fortissimo dynamic? Maybe just a couple. Notice how that felt in your body. You needed to let go a lot more from your shoulder all the way down to your fingertip. Have lots of fingertip energy supporting that weight to get that fortissimo sound. Let's go all the way to the opposite end of the spectrum and do a pianissimo sound. Notice how lightly and gently you need to make your arm and hand unit. Still with a little bit of energy in your fingertips, still dropping a, what feels like a little past the bottom of the key bed, even for those quiet sounds. So let's do a rhythm pattern in which you make a crescendo. So you get louder throughout the rhythm pattern. Try to pace that crescendo. Now play a rhythm pattern where you make a diminuendo. So you're getting softer. Now one common problem with doing that, with making a diminuendo, is that we tend to make the diminuendo happen all at once. So if I'm doing a rhythm pattern with a crescendo, back to the first thing where we're getting louder, let's see, do da di do di do da di do. It's fairly easy to have a nicely paced crescendo. If I do a diminuendo, often it tends to sound like this. It's really soft right away and then we have to just stay really soft and then try to get softer and softer and there's only so soft that you can go and it doesn't work anymore so try hard when you're playing a diminuendo to decrease that volume slowly so that you have some time to finish it out let's think about starting a little bit louder Then you have somewhere to go. So make sure you start at the upper end of that spectrum. I already started too softly and I had to start over. So start at the upper end so that you have a place to go. Why don't you play another rhythm pattern using a diminuendo. Think about starting loudly and then pace that across your rhythm pattern. So that's our improvisation for the day. So we're going to go ahead and look at our review. Turning back to unit 12, we're going to review the whole tones or the whole steps. So looking at that right side of the page, you're thinking about those different steps in a major scale or in a scale. I shouldn't because this is the same for minor, except that we wouldn't have so. about what those whole steps sound like. Playing whole tone sounds in different areas of the keyboard, playing whole tone sounds in two directions from a white piano key, two directions from a black piano key, and then uh, starting on different piano keys and playing a series of five whole tones. One, two, three, four, five. You notice once you're done with that, if you played another one, you'd be starting over. I started on C sharp, and I ended on C sharp. One, two, three, four, five. If I played one more, I'd be back to G sharp again. So concentrate on that last one, playing the series of five whole tones, and do a little bit of review of these other ways to think about whole tones, playing them from each direction. See how you can recognize these on the keyboard. So practice working with whole tones. Do a little bit right now and continue working with this over the next couple of weeks. And then we're looking at leaves are falling. 
for leaves are falling and for handkerchief dance, we did not learn the accompaniments in our last unit. So we're going to go ahead and do those today. So here's leaves are falling. We're in harmonic minor tonality. La is E. Melody starts on La. just now go ahead and take some time and practice and then let's try that hands together so notice that your right hand the melody hand will start so it's that do where the hands come together the first time and it's continuing to be where do is that root note of each of the chords, or the lowest note, the bass note, I should say. And that might feel very off kilter in your hands. So take a little time and practice that now. And if you need to do just a little bit, you can start with this. I would do just that. And then you can do the next little bit. Or which is a hard place to start because that upbeat really wants to go with the macro beat. So try doing just little snippets. If you're having trouble, we will absolutely look at this at the group class check-in. Let me know if you're having any difficulty with that. So do mark down the accompaniment for Leaves Are Falling with today's date. Mark down hands together if you were able to do that. If not, we will work on that together. Don't worry about it. And let's look over at Handkerchief Dance on page 40. We're in duple meter, major tonality. Do is G. So do day do here I go. I'm not sure at what speed you are currently playing that song. We learned it much slower, which is wonderful. That's exactly what you need to do. That gets more comfortable. So if you are playing this at a slower tempo, that is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Continue playing that. Continue working on moving easily over the keys. If you're having trouble speeding up, you can try doing some of the movements with your hand and try trying to make some of the movements faster. So you could go like this, do the first two keys. Think about your arm and hand carrying your fingers through that. So your fingers aren't poking on those notes. But the arm is carrying your hand through the notes. Then you could do the next one. And then the next one. Take it 
your time. Reset, feel totally ready to start over. Reset, feel ready to start over. Ready to start over. So that's a way to work on the hand movements, the hand and arm movements that you use to get through these notes. If that is comfortable, then you can work on the movements that go the other direction. And this is fun. It messes with your head a little bit. Play the first note by itself and then go in between the other two. Prepare the next two notes. Just helps you prepare the other direction that your hand moves. Then you could try playing four notes. Notice that you have two movements then, down and down, down and down. Two of those little rolls. Two rolls. That one's like a curve around. So if you're having trouble, go ahead and practice some of these ways. If you're already playing it fast, you might try practicing some of these ways anyway, but think not about the notes, think about your hand, your arm, think about how you're moving through those notes. Think about the movement of your arm. How coordinated can you make that movement? Can you feel those two little rolls as one idea in your hand that has a little zigzag in it? So start to think about it that way. You can have more coordinated movements even if you're already playing it fast. Now, here's our accompaniment. slowly so you can hear our chord changes. Do, de, do, here I go. At that speed, I'd like for you to go ahead and play the accompaniment with me while I play both parts. Then try putting the hands together. If this hand is feeling coordinated, you can do it at this speed. You can do it in bits. So start trying to put that together. If you're not able to put that together, that is all right. Keep working on making the melody coordinated and also on playing the accompaniment. So if you're playing the accompaniment and not hands together, do try playing that with the track, the audio track that goes with the book. Um, and then also continue practicing making the melody faster. So certainly do the accompaniment now. If you can do hands together, that's great. It doesn't have to be fast. It can be at a slow tempo. And then looking backwards at the first page of unit 11. Hey, look, chromatics. So. What I'd like you to think about for the chromatics this time is think about the difference between a half step sound and a whole step sound. Half step sound, whole step sound. Half step sound, whole step sound. You can start with a whole step, step. 
So just play some half steps, play some whole steps. You can play them at the same time. That's a very different sound as well. So think about that and then also continue to practice the chromatic scale. You could start chanting. chromatic scale that's a nice amount for chanting do days you could do do daddies you can go on or you could do just one octave with the do daddies for the do to datas scale and do days divides everything into two puts everything in groups of two do dotties puts it in groups of three and do to date just puts it in groups of four 12 is divisible by two by three and by four so it doesn't matter if you do one octave two octaves three octaves it will all sound very nice because the chromatic scale is divisible by any of those three numbers there, if I lost you on that math, don't worry about it, we're moving on. So practice the chromatic scale, both hands, think about the difference between whole steps and half steps. And then major tonality, when Do is A. What I'd like for you to add on the melodic cadence is add the left hand roots. <laughs> in there. Do, so, so, do. Go ahead and play that. For the A major scale, make sure you play it in a connected style. Think about how that feels as you walk from one note to the next with your arm carrying your hand. Each finger nicely supported by your arm. Think about how your arm moves up and forward for the black keys. So you're really thinking about technique as you work on your A major scale. And then looking over at F sharp minor for the melodic cadence, we're also adding the left hand roots. We are adding one more thing for today. We have a new keyboard piece. This is called Triple Love Somebody. So go ahead and move to macro beats. Think about the meter of this piece as I play. familiar from when we've done this in its original meter. So this is in triple meter. Go ahead and name the tonality of this piece. So this is in major tonality. Can you audiate the resting tone? Ba, do. Echo these rhythm patterns from the piece. Do, da, de, do, echo me please. Do de do da do de do do de do da do de do do de do to de to do de do do de do to de to do de do. So we're gonna chant those in a response. We're gonna hand them off, pass the baton like we did last time. So I'll have you chant that first rhythm. Do de do da do de do. When you chant it, try not to have it end like I just did. 
your voice should carry on so that it's ready to hand it off to me. Ready, chant. Do, dee, do, da, do, dee, do, do, dee, do, ta, dee, ta, do, dee, do. Now we'll trade. You get to finish with do, dee, do, ta, dee, ta, do, dee, do. All right, so I'll start. Do, dee, do, da, do, dee, do, do, dee, do, ta, dee, ta, do, dee, do. Go ahead and open up in your book to page 42 to triple love somebody. Take a look at the music information box. This is in triple meter, major tonality. Do is C. The melody starts on Do. Let's play the C major tonic, dominant tonic, arpeggios, and springtime one to establish our tonality. Do. some tonal patterns from this song. So we didn't do any of those just now, so go ahead and listen. Do, mi, so. So, re. Fa, do. Prepare your hand and fingers, starting on the keys. We're going to need all five fingers for this song. Let's play each phrase alone. So we're going to think about phrase one. Phrase one sounds like this. Do, da, dee, do, here I go. Practice that if you need to. Phrase two, instead of going from so to re, so re, fa, ends backwards from that. Fa to re. Play the second phrase. Ready, play. Do, de, do, da, do, de, do. Practice that if you need to. Third phrase is the same as the first one. Ready, play. Practice that if you need to. And then third phrase. We're going to have a very gentle bounce as part of this phrase. Do, dee, do, ta, dee, ta, do, dee, do. When you have that ta, dee, ta, see, if you can gently bounce on the key, see if you can find exactly the point in the key where it re-engages. So if you press down on the key and then let it come up, feel where it lets go. You don't actually have to let the key go all the way back up. For me, it's right about here on this piano. And you can gently bounce against that, like you're gently bouncing on a trampoline, working against that springiness. And that's what's going to make it easier to play this, is that you're bouncing in a very small way, a very short distance. that. Right now, just try to find that place in the key. And then practice to dee to do, dee do. So keep your hand ready. To dee to do, dee do. Go ahead and practice that. And then try that last phrase. Do, dee, do, to dee. play 
the whole song, I'm going to play the accompaniment with it, and we're going to learn that. Do da de do, play with me. harmony. Do, and then so. We're doing so below do. So go ahead and listen to the root harmony or play along if you already know what it is. Here we go. Phrase four. Do, so, do. Do, da, de, do. Play the, play the root harmony with me. For our tonic chord for each of the first three phrases, the tonic chord is on B. And then the middle, the, the dominant chord moves in the opposite direction to the right hand. So the right hand does Re, Mi, Fa, left hand does Fa. first three phrases. Do da de, do play both parts with me. together that's totally fine go ahead and continue working on that so today I'd like for you to do the melody in each hand we didn't do the melody in this hand make sure you practice that especially that bounce at the end if you're trying to do it with your finger that's not going to be as successful and it's not as nice in your hand so make sure that bounce comes from your arm with a nice stable finger position so that your finger is not going to wiggle everywhere. All right, we're ready for our assignments. So assignment number one, pattern CD track 28. We have a new one and audio tracks 26 through 27. So pattern CD track 28, audio tracks 26 through 27. Assignment two, our keyboard geography and technique. Page 41, oops, wrong page. 41, left side, numbers one and two. Assignment three, your improv, same section. Over here, numbers one and two. Assignment four, review units 11 and 12. Assignment five, triple love somebody on page 42. And then for number six, we're looking at the back of the book on a new project. We're looking at page 65. We're doing two tone tonal patterns or intervals from major scale degrees. So before each project, we're going to play a tonic, subdominant, dominant, tonic, melodic cadence. So we're going to play in D major. You can just listen. Project 
one is begin with do, play and sing the syllable name of each interval from do in both directions. Do, re, do. for you to sing in because you're going to be doing the entire octave. It's just like our intervals from the pentascale, but this is the entire octave. And we're also going to do project two. We're starting on re. about this it's just within that one scale so I have not been thinking about going I because I'm thinking you're going to start losing the major scale if you think of it that way. so I would play your one four five one melodic oh melodic cadence I did arpeggios it's fine and then the scale before you do each project, especially once you get into projects two, three, four, where you're starting on a note other than do, something other than do, make sure you play that cadence or arpeggio before you start so you don't lose where your tonic is. So you're doing projects one and two. Thank you very much for joining me for Music Moves for Piano, book three, unit 13A. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye.